Good. All right. So we have learned how to graph lines by a couple of different methods. We had the cover method, right? We had the slope intercept where you plug the y intercept in and then you use the slope to find a second point. Um, we've learned how to just substitute in a number and get you know two points out. Uh, we learned what the x equals a number looks like being a vertical line and y equals a number being a horizontal line. Everyone agree with that so far? Yeah. Okay, so solving systems of linear equations. So this means we're going to show when you have two lines that are graphed on the same grid, where do they cross? And sometimes it's real obvious. It's like, oh, it crosses at 3, 2. And that's awesome. But sometimes it might cross at like a decimal or a fraction where I don't care how accurate you're on your graph and you can't figure that out right away. And that makes you normal. All right, so how do we solve systems? Well, there's graphing. And, uh, but we also have some others. One's called the algebraic method or the addition method or the elimination method. And one's called substitution. They all have their valuable spots in uh, doing this. Uh, solving systems of equations, the fundamental part of math that it's used for really is I know that most of you have a cell phone, and those of you who do have a cell phone, I know that you have some sort of password. Thank you. I'll get that graded in for you. So once you do have a cell phone and you're plotting, you know, putting in your code to get into your phone because you want to protect all your stuff. And plus it's no fun when your person, your friend is like acting like they're you on your snap a chat tweet. Snapchat. Um, Snapchat face tweet. I don't know what they call it. But uh, that's always just kind of funny. But there's that, the math that goes with this is actually the math behind the algorithm that allows you to unlock phones or emails or um, anything that has some sort of passcode to it. It works along with this type of math. Now, this is pretty basic, the math algorithm that they use in order to get into phones and stuff like that is a lot more intense. Um, back in the olden days, it was really easy to hack into stuff, especially when people were using dial-up modems. It was real easy to get into that. It, I mean, the, the sad thing is, telephone lines, how internet used to travel across, you could go outside, telephone line boxes were never locked, they still aren't to this day, so this is the landline stuff. So you could walk in, bring, bring your 28.8 gigahertz modem, which is like watching ants crawl across the ground to get information, but it, uh, you could plug it in to whosoever phone number you wanted to, or you could plug in and wait for your friend to get online and you could get and see all their information. That's how, how bad our security measures were for this a long time ago. Now, are they getting better? Yeah, are hackers getting better? Sure. What, what do major companies do with hackers? They hire them and they pay them a lot of money to, to be at their company because those hackers can indeed um, ruin a lot of large industry. Um, the federal government actually does a lot of hiring hackers as well because they pay them a lot of money to try and hack into other countries' networks. And those other countries are trying to pay our hackers lots of money to hack back into the United States stuff. So it's just a big game of, and it's all math that goes with it. It's just a mathematical algorithm that protects our information. And you know, you're going, what in the heck are you talking about? But I just want to say that this is where the first thought process comes from as far as um, a system of equations. Okay? So where these system, where these two lines could cross is the solution to the problem. Okay? So let's take a look at our very first one. <clears throat> so I'll do this one in red. What is my y-intercept? One. One. Good. Thank you. So one right here. And then my slope does what from that point? Go up up three and? Over one. Over one. So up three, one, two, three, and over one. And I could keep going on and on forever and ever. But for the most part, 
this is going to do that. Okay? And you're going to try and draw it as straight as you possibly can. And then let's do this one in blue. This one, I think the cover method works really well with it. Agree? So if I cover y up, 2 times x equals 6, so 2 equals what? Or x equals what? 3. three. And then y equals 6. Oh, okay, so 1, 2. So it's up there. Do you all feel that these lines cross? Where do they cross? Where does it appear? <coughs> 1 comma 4? Yeah. It look, I think it might be 1 comma 4. That is. As far as my picture goes. Now, I got to see if I'm correct on this because, you know, I'm drawing this on an electronic board and I'm kind of freehand in it. So let's see if I'm even close. Is this an X value? Yeah. Is this a Y value? No. So mm -hmm. in order for this to work, this point has to exist on both of my lines. So if I take X, Y and plug it in, I'm going to get 4 equals 3 times 1 plus 1. Well, what's 3 times 1? 3. What's 3 added to 1? 4. 4 equals 4. So this point is indeed on this one right here, 100%. Let's see if it works on this one. So same idea, plug it in. 2 times 1 plus 4. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 added to 4 is? So it's also on that one. So that is indeed our solution. And when we're plugging in our passcode that through that math algorithm on our phone or on our email, it has to send some sort of, and this is a called a two-dimensional matrix, but you don't even know that. You know, yes, it goes along with the matrix of the movie. No, not really. But that's what it's kind of called. When you do this in real, you know, real math land, it's pretty intense. You know, you get don't just get two unknowns, you get like 50 unknowns. Thank you, I'll get that graded in the book for you. And Landon, make sure those three assignments for tomorrow. You got those? Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Boy, you're telling me how to bring up a graphing program to hack into other countries? Yeah. They, they run a program that um, combines numbers, so, and then it hits like the submit button, and then it brings it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. it's, those are called iterations. Mm -hmm. And what it's doing is basically it's trying to find which iteration works. It's basically, so let's go on a real basic level. Have you ever, you have a, a front door lock on your home? Yes? Mm -hmm. Now, do you still have a key? I know sometimes people have a push button. Oh, I have that. But do you have a key? Have you ever put a key in? No. And you ever put a key into, you've never put a key into a lock? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's going to say, no. dude, what, where are we sheltering you from? So, so let's just take this. I only got a handful of keys, right? And I know this cabinet is always open over here. But if I take, say, the key to the concession stand here at Cherry Creek High School, is this the concession stand at Cherry Creek High School? No. You're worth sure, right? I mean, we don't have any candy in there. We got books, yay. So if I try and stick my key in, it's not gonna work, right? I try it both ways. Maybe it goes in just a little tiny bit, but it doesn't work. Okay? So that, if I take the right key, and I don't even remember which is the right key. I take the right key and I stick it in there. Yay. Oh, that's almost the right key. What's wrong with it? It doesn't have the right indentations and ups and downs. So I take this key. Man, it's gotta be one of those. She looks at the keys. Let's see. That's on. Oh, uh, that's that white one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be the last key I check because I'll stop checking at that point. Guess what? I don't have the right key, so I don't have the solution to that lock. Okay. It's a good thing it's always unlocked for us. I have an IP finder, but that's about it. Okay. So this is the ins and outs. So am I trying to teach you how to hack computers with us? No, I'm trying to teach you the thought process that goes along with a much higher level type of math. Okay, so by graphing it, where they intersect, they intersect at a point. If they intersect at a point, we can label it x comma y. 
x comma y has to work in both of the equations in order for this, it to be the solution to the problem. Can I move on? All right, so how do you know if the solution works? You gotta plug it in, okay? So when you plug it in it, and it comes out to a true statement, you're good to go. So let's solve this next system. Let's do this one in blue. So what is the y-intercept? Five. Five? Everyone feel comfortable with that? And it has a slope of? Undefined. What's the number in front of x? One, so it's a slope. Up one, right one. Okay. Do the best you can, draw in as straight of a line as possible. Let's uh, let's graph that one. What's my y-intercept of that? Negative four. Y-intercept. I heard it, I thought. Zero. Zero. Negative four is my slope. So from this, I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, and write one. Oh, man, that's close. I don't know if I can. What's your language? What point does that appear to be? Uh, two, uh, three, uh, two, three, real close. Negative two, right? Because I count back two. Yeah. And it looks like it looks like it might be that. How can I verify this is actually my solution? Plug it in. Yeah, plug it back in to make sure it's going to work. Okay. So this is an x value. This is a y value. Let's plug them and see what happens. So on this top one, I'm going to get three is equal to negative two plus five. Is negative two plus five three? Uh, um, yeah. 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 All right. Take it and plug it in the second one. So I'm going to get uh, three <clears throat> equals negative four times negative two. So is three equal to eight? No. That's just ridiculous, right? So what happened on this problem? Well, the blue question we have drawn correctly. Maybe we should see if I can draw this one a little bit better. Let's redraw. I know those two points. And maybe I should try and use a straight edge best I can. That looks a little better. I use a straight tool. So let's see if we can define that. That's negative one up one, two, three, four. So negative one up four. Okay. Hey, let me ask you this real quick though. Why did negative two comma three work on the blue line? Does this point exist on the blue line? So it should work. Okay, but at negative one comma four should it work as well. So let's take negative one and four and plug it in. So I'm gonna get uh, four is equal to negative one plus five. So four equals four, okay. It works on that, and let's try it on the other one. So I'm gonna plug, at four equals negative four times negative one. Plug in my x and y's in. Four equals four. Cool, we found the solution. So that is indeed our solution. That one wasn't, we were off, okay? But can you see why graphing might not be a really top-notch thing to do? I mean, it's good, it's good to practice graphing, but graphing should not be the end-all be-all for these. So I've shown basically graphing using uh, y equals mx plus b slope intercept form. And it seems to work really well for us. Are there any questions on those? Bottom. Hmm. Wow. Can I move on? We're good, happy. All right. The solution to any system of linear equations is the intersection point, the point they have in common. So the point should exist on both of the lines. If it does not, it won't. So we might come across a problem that says, hey, is this a solution to those two problems? 
So we could do one of two things. We can go and graph it and see if four or negative three is where they cross each other. Or I could just say, you know what? This is an X value. This is a Y value. If I just plug them directly in, it should work. So on the top, I'm going to get negative three is equal to negative two times four plus five, which is negative three. <coughs> Excuse me. So what is negative eight added to five? Negative three. Good. So is that a solution? Does that exist on this line? Yes. So yes on this one. Yup. All right, let's go on the second one. So I'm going to get 4 plus 2 times negative 3 is equal to negative 2. Agree? So 4 minus 6 equals negative 2. 4 subtract 6. Negative 2. So does it work on this one? Yeah. Cool. So is that a solution to this system of equations? Yeah, it's the key that unlocks the lock. It's the passcode that we put in that allows the algorithm to say, yeah, go on inside. Hmm. Will you try that second one for me? See how you do? Please. Mm -hmm. Getting there? So I had one of them work and the other one didn't. So is one comma five the solution to that system of equations? Yeah. It works on one though, right? Yeah. So you know what that's like? I bet does any of you have that fingerprint thing for your phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So your fingerprint, uh, whatever finger you choose. Your opposite side, so I had my index finger. So my index finger on my right hand is very similar to the index on the left hand, but I can't open up my phone with my left finger as far as the reading my fingerprint. Agree? Yeah. On my mom's, our thumbprints are so much alike that I can use mine for really? my fingerprints. So what happens is basically your phone is. It's going to pick probably anywhere from 5 to 15 points of origin, and it matches it up. So it doesn't mean you, you and your mom have similar fingerprints, mm -hmm. but they might be far enough apart that if, like, let's say Apple decides, hey, we want to start doing 30 points versus 15, then it would kind of stop working. Mm -hmm. But um, have you ever tried a key that wasn't the actual correct key for the lock, and it worked? Oh, yeah. So back in the olden day, the old Jeep, the Jeep CJ5s, the old school ones, the ones that people want to now buy and soup up, they were like really inexpensive. You could put any Jeep key in. Yay, you could put any Jeep key. It didn't matter what Jeep you got it from. You could put it into it, and it would start it. That's how low-end Jeep security was on their, on their uh, starting mechanisms of their Jeeps. 
Um, and there was a lot of people who were Jeep owners who they would just take a screwdriver and stick it in there and turn it and it would start their Jeep. That's how low function is. But the ridges and curves on your key are what make it work, which are the math algorithm or the uh, solution to the system of equation. So that one where we had to work on one but not on the other, um, that's kind of like the key that sometimes works. So let's say our algorithm is like, just check the top equation today. Well, that worked. Now it's just check the bottom, it won't, or check both. So if one works and the other one doesn't, It is that? not a solution to the system, and it'd just be one of those where you got lucky. That's why you have to check it on both. So if it, um, what did you just say, no solution? No solution, it's perfectly right. Yep. We doing okay? All right. So let's see, how many solutions can we have? Okay, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Good. That'll work. Okay. All right. So, how many solutions does this appear to have? Two. You have one point of intersection. So you have two numbers, which you have an x and a y value. So you have one solution. Is that okay? The second one, they have parallel lines. Will these parallel lines cross each other? No. no. So if they're not going to cross each other, you have zero solutions. So you put no solution. And this one's kind of weird. This is actually the exact same equation graphed upon itself. So if you go and graph it and it becomes the same exact line, this means you have infinite solutions. That all right? Oh, you, you can't see the lines? No. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, they're behind the boxes, so you get to write those lines up there. Sweet. Is this the last slide? Yeah. Yeah. Plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Plug. Plug, plug. I'd like to inform you to stop kicking my butt off. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I won't like What's your little song? Your little jig thing? You cannot touch my. Oh, oh. oh. I'm sorry. You feel good about these? So, we still got a few minutes. So why don't I give you the assignment, you can start on them now. Page 133 and 134. Turn on the lights. Okay. We good in the hood?